where everything you know is wrong. It's time. The Muslims of the 21st century, they have taken people like Tupac, people like Biggie, people like Dr. Dre, people like Snoop Dogg, people like 50 Cent, people like Buster Rhymes, as role models. When you have the best role model that ever walked on the face of this earth, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brother from the Makhla and Badr, the Muslims are 313, the Kufar are a thousand, the battle takes place and the Kufar are crushed. From the battle of Uhud, the Muslims are 700, the Kufar are 3000, yet again the commander is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The battle takes place and the Kufar are crushed. From the battle of Ahzab, the Muslims are 2000, the Kufar are 24,000. Yet again, the commander is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The battle takes place and the Kufar are crushed. Come the battle of Tabuk. The Muslims are 30,000. The Kufar are several hundred thousand. Yet again, the commander is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Kufar see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his army coming, they disperse and they make a U-turn and they run away. ruled with wisdom and strength. This is the role model that the whole world should be following. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاكبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الحبيب المرسلين محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Dear respected brothers, sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After praising Allah the Almighty and sending salutations on Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I begin by thanking Al Qadr for giving me this opportunity to convey the message of Allah and His Messenger Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam As I pray to the Almighty Allah the Allah accepts my efforts in delivering this message As I pray to the Almighty Allah the Allah accepts your lot's efforts in listening to this message My brothers and my sisters if you remember there was a generation who was around 1400 years ago a generation that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave him a mention the hadith recorded by Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the best of generations is my generation then the generation who follows them and the generation who follows them who were they the companions of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the likes of abu bakr the likes of umar the likes of uthman the likes of ali the likes of hassan the likes of hussein the likes of abdullah ibn abbas the likes of anas ibn malik just to mention a few when they came across verses of the Quran when Allah said that if your forefathers your fathers your brothers 
your sisters, your families, your children, your merchandises, your businesses, your houses, your dwellings. If anything becomes more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger, then wait for the punishment of Allah to descend. When they came across verses of the Quran, when Allah said, O oh people, if you love Allah, then follow the Messenger of Allah and Allah will love you and He will forgive your sins. When they came across verses of the Quran, when Allah said, O oh you who believe, follow Allah, follow His Messenger and those who have been given authority over you. They understood that there was one role model to follow and that was the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In spite of the fact that they were persecuted, they were killed, they were tortured, they were taken from their lands, they were boycotted, their mothers were killed in front of them, their children were killed in front of them. In spite of this, they understood that there was only one way to Jannah and that was to follow the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because they understood that they were the best of nations who had been taken out from mankind to enjoin what is good and forbid what is evil. They understood that if, if their forefathers, their fathers, their brothers, their sisters, their children, their houses, their dwellings, their merchandises, their businesses, they understood that if them things had become more beloved to them than Allah and His Messenger, then they would have tasted the punishment of Allah. They had one example to follow, one man to follow, one role model to follow, and that was the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But today, we have the opposite. Because of the way he used to treat every person, individually, with sensitivity. And he used to analyze what is sensitive to you and avoid it until you would think that he loves you the most. Every single companion thought they were the most beloved. And this way the Prophet ﷺ kept the unity of his companions and abolished, uh, abolished the jealousy and the hatred and the envy that could exist between them. So each one of them was a special character for him. And this is the way the Prophet ﷺ teaches us to deal towards one another ourselves and towards our children. Not to try and show the favorism of one to another. He said, I was amongst the crowd hustling and jostling and shoving to come and see the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, when I saw him, the first impression I had of him, he said, I knew that his face was not the face of a liar. This is not a man that told lies. In other words, the honesty and the beauty, the inner beauty and the outer beauty combined. Abdullah ibn Salam saw this from the Prophet Wasallam, and he said he accepted Islam right then and there. In other words, Abdullah ibn Salam converted just by seeing the Prophet Wasallam, and then hearing the very first words that came out of his mouth. Such was the power, such was the beauty, such was the perfection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed our beloved Prophet Wasallam with. So he used to say to them, Behold, we have been sent a people to take the people from the worship of created things to the worship of the creator of all things and to save the people from injustice into the openness and mercy of Islam and to bring justice to the earth. Do not kill an old man of your, amongst your enemies if he is not fighting you. Do not kill a woman who is not fighting you. Wallahi, even if she is in the ranks of the enemies, do not kill a child. Do not cut up the branches of trees. Do not kill an animal and do not ruin soil and do not be excessive in killing. Do not mutilate the bodies and look after the affairs and the conditions of war. And if you hold captives out of this war, 
then feed them from what you feed from your, fo your family and treat them well as you would treat a guest for they are your captives and you have power over them and Allah does not like people who have oppression over the weak ones when they have power over them. One day, Rasulullah was traveling with his companions and time of Qaylula came, the midday nap. And he was napping alone on one side and others' companions, each one was napping on different places. At that time, the mushriks were very hostile against them. Suddenly, Rasulullah while laying down, a, excuse me, a mushrik by the name of Ghawrath ibn al-Harith, holding the sword at the neck of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And it says, Ghawrath, Man yamna'uka minni now. Who is going to save you from me now? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the peace of a messenger of Allah, said, Allah! And the sword fell from the hand of the Bushan. He picked it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then held the sword to the neck of Gawrath and said, who is going to save you from me now? And the story is not over. The man said, He said to him, Be a generous taker. Take this from me generously. You know what Rasulullah sallallahu did? He pardoned him and let him go free. So they used to say to them, to the companions, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alaikum fast, becoming Salaamu Alaikum, and they mean death be upon you. And the companions knew that, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew that. That was, they were hostile tribes, some of them. So he was walking with Aisha, one of them passes and says, Salaamu Alaikum. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered, Wa Alaikum, and upon you. Not laughing, one lies. But Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha who was with Rasulullah sallam says, Wa alaykum usamu, wa ghadib Allahu alaykum, wa la'anakum, wa a'adda lakum a'daban azeema, something like that. Then Aisha radiallahu ta'ala replied, and may death be upon you, and the anger and the wrath of Allah azza wa jal. She was hurt. And that's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not just her husband, but that's Rasulullah And then, subhanAllah, in this occasion, Rasulullah sallallahu had this, this ocean of peace, subhanAllah. He says to Aisha, Mahlan ya Aisha. Mahlan ya Aisha. In other words, like what? Take it easy, Aisha. Mahlan ya Aisha. The Prophet said people were rude to him. The desert Arabs were rude to him. And he never returned their rudeness with rudeness. He smiled in their faces. He returned their bad manners with good character. And this is what he taught us to do with people. Patience. When, when the, the woman who was in the graveyard and, and, and she was we, mourning over and the Messenger of Allah passed by her and he, and he said, that uh, this is a musibah and you should be patient. And she said, you didn't have the tribulation that I had. That's how she answered him. And he just left her. Now look at the character there. He didn't say, don't you know who I am? I'm the messenger of Allah. You can't talk to me like that. He didn't say that. He saw she was mus she, musab. She was in tribulation. He left her. 
to be in her tribulation. He gave her nasiha and she didn't accept it, but he recognized her psychological state. She was in a state that it was not useful or beneficial to continue with her and so he left her. I, this is wisdom, this is hikmah. And then he went to his house and somebody came by and he, and, and he said, don't you know who that was? That was the Messenger of Allah. Suddenly remorse entered her heart. Astaghfirullah. And she went to his house and knocked on the door. Ya Rasulullah, I didn't know it was you. Patience that Allah wants is at that point. That's the point Allah does not want you to lose control. To forgive your brother for Allah's sake, to forgive your sister for Allah's sake, not for them. To do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really, there's people in here that haven't talked to their brother or their sister or some of them to their mothers and their fathers. Don't be that person. Don't cut off your bloodship bonds. Don't be that person. Do it for the sake of Allah. And a man came to the Messenger of Allah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Asilu akhi wa yaqta'uni u'atihi wa yamna'uni uwasiruhu wa la yuwasiruhu. I give him, he withholds. I come to him, he cuts me off. What should I do? He said, that is Sidat al-Rahm. That what you're doing is the right thing and continue to do it even though he's cutting you off. That's Islam. That's Islam. And it's hard. Don't think this is an easy religion. And he would always occupy people in what benefited them and the ummah. And he would ask about them. And he would ask about news about them. How are they doing? And how is so and so? And if can he tafaqadu ashabu? If somebody wasn't there, he would say, Where's so and so? And the old woman who used to clean the the masjid. She used to sweep the masjid out and one day she died, they buried her. And he came, he said, where's that woman that used to, she was a black woman. Where's the woman who used to sweep the masjid? They said, she died, Ya Rasulullah. He said, why didn't you tell me she died? You know, why didn't you tell me she died to go pray on her? Well, she, she's insignificant. And he would actually ask people, tell me, if you know anybody in need, come and tell me about them so I can help them. And then he told them that those people who help other people who are not able to go and get help, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make firm their feet on the day of judgment. You know, take, looking after people, just taking care of people, this is all just... <laughs> it's like just he's just teaching people how to be human beings. I mean, that, this, this is all it is. You know, we're just learning how... Is, it's like human beings don't know how to be human. You know, this is, this is the whole point. It's, this is all just to teach you just to be human beings. This is the Messenger وسلم, that the Muslims of the 21st century should be taking as a role model. The best example that ever stepped on the face of this earth was none other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The hadith is in Bayhaqi. The narrator is Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. He says that Bedouin from Bani Sulaim, he was walking and he has a lizard with him. And he says to the companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to the companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that who is that man that is surrounded by men? And the companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Bedouin pushes his way through and goes towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, when he sees Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, that I swear by la tan uzza, a mother has not given birth to a child that I hate more than you. And if my people didn't think I was hasty, then indeed I would have severed your head from your body. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu is present. A man of action and a man of words. He says, O oh, Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa give me permission and I will strike this kafir's head off. Permission is not granted. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa says that, tell me, why did you insult me? Why did you dishonor me? And the Bedouin replies by saying, I swear by Lat and Uzza, I would not believe in you, nor would I testify in you, 
until my lizard testifies in you. The narration states, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam says to the lizard, that tell me who am I? And the lizard replies by saying, I worship he whose throne is in the heaven, whose rule is on the world, whose mercy is in paradise, and his punishment is in hell. Yet again, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, tell me who am I? Tell me who am I? And the lizard replies by saying, that you are the messenger of Allah. Successful is the one who believes in you. And unsuccessful is the one who disbelieves in you. Flowing on the lips of this Bedouin is, I testify there's no God worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger. This is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa that the whole world should be following. This is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa that the Muslims of the 21st century should be taking as a role model. Why? Because the hadith could be found in Bayhaqi. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa is traveling and he sees a Bedouin. And he says to the Bedouin that testify, there's no God worthy of worship except Allah and I am the messenger of Allah. The Bedouin replies by saying, that tell me, who is here to testify in you? Who is here to testify in you? The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he points towards the tree and he calls the tree and the tree comes tearing the ground and he stops in front of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says three times, I testify, there's no God worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. I testify, there's no God worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger. I testify, there's no God worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. Yet again, the hadith is in Tirmizi. The companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting down. And he says that I seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the masjid. He says I was looking at the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then I was looking at the moon. Then I was looking at the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then I was looking at the moon. Every time I was looking at the moon, my eyes were fixed on the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because his face was more beautiful than the moon. This is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the whole world should be following. This is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Muslim of the 21st century should be taking as a role model. Why? Because Adam alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Shish alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Nuh alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Ismail alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Ishaq alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Ya'qub alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Musa alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Yusha alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Daniel alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Yunus alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Ayyub alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Dawood alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. Yahya alayhi wa sallam was sent to one nation. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam surpassed a lot of them and he was sent to the whole of mankind. The hadith, my brothers, are numerous. And if we carry on and carry on and carry on, why? Because the blessing that Allah sent to this world was none other than the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The love Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for this Ummah? Have we forgotten the love Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for you and I? Have we forgotten the worry and concern Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had for this Ummah, had for you and I? Have we forgotten the favors and blessings we were showered with because of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Have we forgotten the wounds that were inflicted on the person of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because of this ummah, because of you and I? Have we forgotten the blood that came out of the blessed body of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because of this ummah? Have we forgotten the tears that rolled down Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam's eyes and the tears he sallallahu alaihi wasallam shed because of this ummah? 
Today, we have forgotten the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today, we neglect the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today, we have no value for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have no value for his sunnah. My brothers, today we neglect the rights of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I ask you, did Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ever forget you once? Why is it that the Muslims are ashamed to act upon the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Why is it that the Muslims of the 21st century are ashamed to act upon the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? If they are ashamed to grow dreadlocks under the armpits and between their thighs, then why are you ashamed to keep the beard? If they are ashamed. To walk half naked on the streets, then why are you ashamed to wear the hijab or the niqab properly? If they are ashamed to commit sin in public, then why are you ashamed to pray salah on the streets? If they are ashamed to jump in the pool naked, then why are you ashamed to do wudu in the toilet sinks? This is who you are. You are the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and do not, do not underestimate Allah's power. Why? Because Allah indeed has tested people before you. Allah has tested the people of the 21st century in foreign countries. People are killed. People are raped. Don't make Allah test you people in this way. You've got Islam on your plate. You could practice Islam. Hold firm upon the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is who you are. So what? If we eat with our hands, this is who we are. So what? If we sit down and urinate, this is who we are. So what? If we grow the beard, this is who we are. So why if the Muslim women wear the hijab or the niqab, this is who they are? So why if the Muslim viewers use a stick to brush their teeth, this is who we are? We are Muslims and we are the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And never forget this. Never forget this. I began by saying that if your forefathers, your fathers, your brothers, your sisters, your housing, your dwellings. Your merchandise is your business. If anything becomes more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger, I end by saying that if your forefathers, your fathers, your brothers, your sisters, your children, your houses, your dwellings, your merchandise is your business, businesses. If anything becomes more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger, then wait for the punishment of Allah to descend. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.